In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. And we have gathered some suggestions from people as to topics that we would like to start looking into. And uh, we had several who were interested in exploring, being introduced to looking at the Theotokos and her role in the life <clears throat> of the church. And so uh, Subdeacon Stoyan has prepared some, some topics or some uh, important points about the Theotokos that uh, he will present to us tonight. And then we can have questions or answers or if I, along the way, have things that I remember or or stories I would like to share or something, I will I'll do so as well. But uh, thank you, Subdeacon Stoyan, and please come um, lead the discussion. Bless the Lord be upon you. I guess we all know each other, so we don't have to be shy or anything like that. Um, Mother of God is something that we all love her, we all have unique connection and experience with her and I might get emotional, forgive me, but she has been and she is my mama, as I call in my private prayers. So it's, I think it's the most beautiful thing besides God, of course, whom we love as our priority and everything. She is the one who is here for us and never leaves us and will go along the way as we'll be talking about her. So again, I, speaking about the Mother of God, it's really hard, at least for me, to put myself into a position to talk about someone who is perfect, more than perfect. I don't think the word perfect is really enough to describe really who she is. Uh, I mean, having in mind the spiritual state I am in, and I mean, I can't speak for anyone, but for me, and then talking about her, it's really impossible, but for the love that I have for her, and I'm not talking about out of pride, out of love for her, I do want to talk about her, and I, with a, a Father Tadja's blessings, I chose to, <clears throat> you know, to kind of do a little bit more research and talk about, about her tonight and, you know, share with, with all of you. Before I start, I, speaking of, um, that it's almost impossible to talk about her and because she is so perfect, I do want to say a quote from this one Metropolitan in Macedonia, now that um, he has written some stuff about the Mother of God. So before he talks about, it says, as the aunt that stands, in the, you know, they're very tiny, um, the, the small aunt, and, uh, when it stands in front of us, she, on, or she or he only can see the shoes of, of us, so they don't really know what's happening, I'm paraphrasing, what's happening uh, of us, they can't see, I mean, the body or even the face, so they have no idea um, what, what they're, they just cannot understand what's standing in front of them. So it is with a man standing in front of the, the, the saints and especially in front of the mother of God and, and, and understand or talk about them. So not, I mean, not even to talk about the God's eyes, uh, who is even more higher and the higher it is, from our perspective, the more the more things the more things on the earth become less important for us, and when it, when they become less important, that's when they they are more clear for us. Just like you know the 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 Christ says, if the the seed doesn't go under the ground, it cannot bring um, a fruit. So I, I thought just to connect this because about before we start talking about Mother of God, because it's really it's impossible. I mean, it's but. You know, we do our best to talk to to say a few words about her. Before, so I'm gonna go briefly um, from the beginning up, up until I guess today, um, chronologically talking about Mother of God, and most of you are familiar about uh, about you know the the events that started from the from the Old Testament. So when you, when we think of the Mother of God, we do have to go back to the Old Testament uh, with the creation of the world. We know that after Adam and Eve, you know, in the, in the primordial sin, you know, there's a need for someone to come on, uh, because they, as humans, did you know, the sin. So someone had to come 
with flesh be among like one of us and and perform and do the salvation um why did it took uh, so long uh, i mean roughly speaking it took uh, probably about five thousand years two thousand years ago so for the mother of god to come the reason why i mean from what we understand is because there was no one really at that time perfect or that uh who can really um give birth to to, to god in flesh so and plus plus you know as we know the old testament was a preparatory to the coming you know for christ as we know you know to mention the unburning bush you know when moses so and God told him, "Take off your shoes, because the the land uh, you're, stand, you're standing on is is holy." So the bush was burning, and and wasn't you know it didn't burn, uh, signify the the purity of the Mother of God. That she was virgin, she you know she remained virgin after giving birth to Christ, and then so many other you know events in the Old Testament that we're talking about the the Mother of God clearly. So uh, beginning from the Adam and Eve, it was really necessary you know i mean someone to come and you know and you know i mean not christ to come through through you know uh, take a human flesh incarnate from the holy virgin mary um and you know to 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 do the, the, I mean, the salvation for the for the whole world it's really important especially in the protestant world people say oh you know mother of god you know they they, they, they claim to you know not claim but they, they don't really confess her and and for me it really i have to say drive me crazy because how can you not really believe not really i mean confess to the one who gave birth to christ because she is the bridge that that christ came you know uh, i mean by by her by her own will so to deny really the mother of god to deny christ to me really doesn't make any sense because their things are connected we don't of course we don't worship her we only venerate christ as we all know that but we wish worship we we worship god Christ, we venerate the Mother of God and, and, and the saints, and and sometimes when I talk to people, I tell them you can say anything, but don't you really dare to talk about anything bad Mother of God? Because once you say that you're my enemy, I'm sorry, I don't cross borders. Say anything, but you either really don't know your faith or don't even talk. And I I come to a point where one time I had to really leave, and and a couple of times where you know I had to you know react in a in a kind of mean way to stop the person. So it's, it's it's very unfortunate, to really, to how people don't understand really. And I'm not, we're not trying to be the best because we're Orthodox, but we really have to understand, really, how everything happened and what you know. She is the beginning, because and Christ didn't force her. We're going to talk about later. So she said yes, you know, let it be according to to the will of God. So again they're going to say oh it doesn't talk about her in the in the new testament well it's very important to know one thing that we have the 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 the, the holy bible and the holy tradition so and remember the holy tradition it's much older than the bible before the bible what we have today was written i mean there was already oral holy tradition that was you know been going on from generation to generation up until everything was written and formulated and, and sealed on ecumenical councils from what we have today so it's really important to understand that we can approach rationally even for god you have to understand i mean you read but it really takes time with your faith and with your heart when you open your heart that's when you really can understand when it comes to a faith because it's not a rational it's not like philosophical or scientific it just you know the more you try you're gonna just go to a wall when you try to break the wall with your head you're gonna just hurt yourself and it just doesn't work that way but we often choose to be blind and do our own way not the way of church of as christ has said so it's really important to really understand that whether i mean there are things are being set up of course the mother of god you know more than you know we can we can have as proofs for those who don't believe but we do know also that holy tradition tells us a lot so if anybody wants to argue with you or with with all of us about it, you know we can freely tell them before you talk to me, why don't you do some research and, you know, if you really want to believe one in the Bible, then, I mean, you really are missing the point, as a, even as a Christian, not only in the Orthodox. By the way, to mention, since we're talking about holy tradition, I did tell you in the very first um, class when I, when I started here, that there's three things are really important that when I, to, I mean, there's so many people that tell, oh, I'm a Christian, I believe in God, and that's fine, but not just because you call yourself Christian, you're a Christian, there's... When I meet somebody 
who claim to be Christian love God, I ask them three very important questions. If you don't confess or acknowledge any, even not even one of those, then don't even consider them a Christian. Number one is, do you believe in God the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Trinity? Very important. Number one, dogma. One of Number two, do you confess and believe that Christ was um, it has two natures as a human and you know and he's a god and man and number three do you believe and confess that he was born from, from the virgin mary from mother of god and yet she remained virgin those, those three are fundamental if you if even there's so many along the way but those three you know if you reject one of those i'm sorry but do i don't even consider christian i mean i you know it's it's just not it's just obvious I and mean, it's obvious that, you know those are the ones that are holding and then everything on it it's, it's been built the entire, you know, um, uh, faith of the, you know, of our Christian faith. Orthodox was called later on, you know, in the early church, everybody was called Christians up until, I believe, it was the fourth century, Father. That one the, was, you know, d uh, defined the word Orthodox because of all those uh, many wrong, uh, wrong teachings. Before uh, we move on about the Mother of God, I want to say uh, the difference between um, two words. Uh, what is an experience? At what is the definition of the word word experience versus word so the experience is not a word when you experience something on a personal level as individual so it's not a word you can talk about it, but it's experience it's deep in your heart it's something that it's 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 unrepeatable it's an unrepeatable personal experience and it's an unrepeatable personal event in your heart in your soul while the words are repeatable and it's something that we can find a common ground, some, something to understand. So you can, of course, describe, but there's a difference that you experience something, you can try to describe, but you really experience its experience. You can try to describe as much as you want when it comes to God, at least. But there's something in your heart that you just feel that you just know that, you know, you do your best, but it's in your heart versus word where you can, you know, talk. They're very, I mean, close to each other. But I really thought that it's very, you know, it's important just to, to bring this up, to understand. Before, when it comes to understanding the faith, I think it's important to, to distinguish experience versus a word. So I thought to mention that it might be, you know, it will be just interesting just to, to think before, you know, you think of something or understanding, especially for the, for the most holy that uh, the mother of God. So God created man, but man can give birth to God. Very interesting concept and sentence. A man becomes a parent to God. So what what is the you know when you think deep about it um, and what it means to a man becomes a parent, which means you know to the mother to the mother of God, she with her consent and free will gives birth to a God man. The mother of God becomes the mother of the divine, and it is the highest spiritual religious and moral value in the history of all religions something that we do believe is something that it's above everything in this world that it's that's that he became flesh through the through the through, the, through to, in, into the womb of a woman uh, according you know with, with with her will and i think that's really unique when it comes to our religions we don't have to you know, compare at all but something that i do think that other religions uh, did a little research on that that they do respect something they cannot argue if anything, I cannot argue. I think it's a mother of God. Even the in, even the in the in the Ottoman Empire back home, they still had a fear of the mother of God. And even in the in the in the Islam, to an extent, they do have great veneration for the mother of God. So, you know, and after you know, in my research, you know, I, I got to read that people don't really dare. I feel like we suffer more from our own people, Christians, than other religions when it comes to the mother of God. Our people would attack more and say bad words and everything within. But other people out of respect, they, they, they don't cross the border. So it's really, you know, I did read somewhere and I, I was, I didn't think about it up until I read it. And it, it actually, when you think about it in the history, it is true. It is really true. So, therefore, Christianity is a religion that believes not only in God, but also in the free will of man. That is why Christ is a person and the relationship with him is personal. Because he was born and raised by a most holy woman and not by a deity. So she was a woman, she was not a god, obviously. Uh, that, that relationship, in this case, the mother and a son, mother of God and Christ, is much more important than the relationship man-God. So a parent 
what's the point that I'm trying here to make is really important to understand that that the mother of God, you know, she she was the one, you know, she could have said no if she wanted. So Christ, if anything, so this has to do a little with the free will. One of the biggest gifts God has given to us is a free will. And you know, that he doesn't force us do this, do that. Certainly on the last judgment, we will not have a choice to repent or to correct ourselves. But he doesn't, he doesn't um, want to, he doesn't want to abuse our, our free will. So based on that free will, it, it took 5,000 years to find the, a woman, a pure woman, to come and to say, yes, here is the servant of God. So, and then even, she could have said no, but she chose to say yes, and the angel did not force her into it. Very, very important points here to understand. And that's how the salvation came, and she became a man, a human became a parent of God. It's, it could be hard to understand in the beginning, but the more we got into the faith, it, you know, it totally makes sense. She's not a deity. She's a woman. She was purified and sanctified first by her life, by her will, and by giving birth to Christ, and until today. Um, so the next thing that I wanted to mention uh, before, also speaking of Mother of God in the in the eve of uh, before Christmas, you know, on the on the Great Vespers, uh, you know, we serve at night. There's one, you know, stihira that we sing. Um, I'm trying to. I'm going to paraphrase. Uh, uh, Lord, every creation gives you something on the when he was born. Um, the the wise men, the gold, Levan and Smyrna, the angels gives you a, a, a hymn. The the shepherds gives you a manger. The the heaven a star. The earth gives you a cave. And us. The human mankind we have given to you as a gift the most holy Theotokos, the mother of God. That's really interesting when you think about it. I mean, what can we give to God? I mean, this is still not enough, but He was willing to come for our salvation. If Christ didn't come, you know, everything would be pointless, as opposed to Paul says. So there, there was a need somebody to come and be like one of us because Adam, Adam and Eve did, you know, the sin flesh with their body. So I mean, God could have stayed in heaven and said, oh, you guys are saved, that's it. But that's not, you know, that's not really what we call maybe valid or whatever you want to call it in today's uh, vocabulary. He had to come, be one of us, except in the sin. Very important, you know, to, 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 know, to know that. So that he would, you know, perform the salvation. And that's why we had so many heresy. People just couldn't understand how God can, can, can uh, become, take, take a flesh. Well, he can, because, I mean, we have so many heresies because they try to understand God rationally. Don't. The more you try... It's important to know, but if you just read and think about it, I mean, you're not going to go far away because the faith is not based, after all, on the on the on the, on the words. It's an experience and the holy tradition and the Bible, of course, and everything, the whole liturgical and spiritual cycle that we have, you know, throughout the year on, on daily on <coughs> daily basis. So uh, there was a big problem, you know, the one of the dogmas and the problem that arose on the, on the third ecumenical council, Macedonians who call Christ uh, Christotokos, very, very important word that, uh, and one of the most beautiful words that was, that, came, that the Holy Fathers came up with, not came up, just formulated and defined and sealed it, which is the ever Virgin Mary. Sometimes it's hard to translate, in my language, I can, I try to look at the, the right translation, but in the litur liturgical, you know, words we use the ever virgin. So not only Virgin Mary, ever. That means before she was while giving birth and after. So really important those two, so that we've been formulated. Um, so also uh, what it means that she, um, she, she's been defined as one of the most, uh, uh, I mean, those are the words that how it's been defined, which means she, like I said earlier, she was virgin before giving birth. She remained virgin while giving birth to Christ and after. To demonstrate that, you know, in the, uh, in the Old Church, you know, when you paint the icons, why do we have three stars on her shoulders, on two of her shoulders and on her forehead? I mean, if you, I don't even if you know, so that's what it means. Not in exact order, but she was virgin before, while giving birth and after. So those three stars, really important. I mean, when you see this, you know, it has to have. That's the reason why it's depicted. One of the things, you know, that's, that, that talks about her uh, virginity and uh, as a mother of God who gave birth to Christ. And also another uh, unique thing that 
Um, I like to mention this is a copy of the Ibron icon. Uh, I think there's some, there's some more streaming icon in Hawaii, and it, many of you, uh, some of you might not uh, probably I mean, would know. So, brother and Tari, who's a keeper, one time you know he brought the icon in, in Carmel, and he was talking about it. I will never forget. And he was talking so calm about the mother of God. And something I will never forget. And she, he was talking, you know, and talking to to us. At some point, he said, "Look, turn to her. Even the way how she's depicted, she's pointing. Look at, not to me. Go to him. When you see with her hand, she's saying, not to me." If you're, when it's hard your life, when you have difficulties, go to him, to my son. He's here. He's here for you. So she's, she's, you know, telling us go to him. She's an intercessor, certainly. But she, you can clearly see that she's pointing to Christ. Go to. He's the one. Go to him. So these icons, you know, that's you know, those are money, uh, visible manifestations. The ultimate is the, the you know the Holy Eucharist. You know that's. In the biggest miracle, you can you can speak of icons and and you know the biggest miracle that we have on daily basis. But these icons and things that we see are the the visible manifestation that God gives to us for our consolation. Things we can touch, we can see, we can smell, like the miracle of the Mother of God and many other the saints as well. Many of us and I was uh, I didn't know until recently, even though you know just because I went to seminary doesn't mean I know everything. I'm learning along the way, certainly. And, you know, we often say most holy to talk to save us. We do say that, but do we really know why? Uh, you know, why, what, I mean, do, what is the meaning and how did it come? You know, as you know, we use all the time on the liturgical, you know, in the liturgy and even when you pray on, with your prayer robes, which is one of the most really, I mean, strong and powerful prayer after the Jesus prayer, you know, most holy to talk to save us. So for, for this, um, I have a little quote that's, um, I want to share um, the God. So, the, the, speaking of why do we, do we say most holy to talk or save us, the relationship between Christ and God it's not defined in that that in, in that that God that He is God and she is a man, but that He is her son and she is her mom. Really important words. So that, that not because that He is God and she is a man, but because God allowed and by her own will that that she again I'm going to repeat myself that that he is her son and, and, and she is his mother. So this is, the, that's, this is the, I think, the, the foundation. If someone asks you why we pray to her or why we say that, well, boom, this is the answer. So those things that you really have to, have to understand. That's why when we say most holy Theodokos save us, we don't think that, uh, or, or that she is saving us by herself, by her own power or anything like that. Or we don't think that she is a deity. Or, or anything, but because of her position as a mother of God, someone who gave birth to, to, to God and, and who has a son who is obedient. So we're going to talk a lot about later, obedience is another key, that she was, I mean, uh, Christ also was obedient <coughs> to her, you know, to, to the point, you know, to, to the very end until today, you know, and we, we'll, we'll say uh, later on. Because of her, and also because of her relationship uh, towards God, and and the relationship between and God towards her, so you know, mother God, God man, really important to, to you know to kind of to really to to be aware of. She uh, she um, she is his mother, and he himself commanded to venerate and respect not. I don't respect is the right word, more than venerate, to venerate, to have her as our protectors. He is the one who, who, who commanded as, um, as one of the, of the biggest um, uh, holy vas vessel given to us and his, uh, and his love and, and his, his, uh, because his obedience. And, you know, she, and like, like I said, she was the mediator and, and the bridge and, and, and through his obedience, you know, and he gave to us you know, that we have her, I mean, as, as a mother of God, to Christ, certainly, to, to all of us. Um, how did she become our protectress? To follow up with the, to follow with the most holy that talk or save us, there's one, uh, the, there's one, there's one um, quote uh, from the bishop I was telling you earlier, um, that I think I really liked it, I brought it down, I, I thought to share with you. So he wrote, could anyone other than her bring down heaven on, on the earth and make God a man. I don't think so. I really don't think so. It, and not, not only did she brought, but she was so humble. 
she was so obedient that to the point where you know she she just gave herself completely and again like this this these are very very important points that that her obedience and her will made her you know to be i mean became, become mother of god and even more you know to be our protectors now uh, until until today in the end of the world and when when we, when we talk about protectors uh there's a tradition of the church and i believe it says on the in one of the canon in the in the Menean book uh that was written by saint theodore the studite studite um about the mother of god so there was a how she became our protectress. This is what uh, the reason how. So she there was a dialogue between the mother of God and Christ. We don't know what century, but I would think early in the beginning. So Christ um, was pretty angry with us. He is probably now by now. I think so too. That to the point where you know he was just upset with us. You know, and the mother of God was asking uh, him, my son. Please have mercy on the on the humans, on the human mankind. And Christ told her, My mother, they have a law, they don't want to keep it. They have commandments, they don't they don't want to keep neither neither the commandments. And then she responds to, to her, my, my my son, the people are weak, have mercy on them. And after her her sweet, loving mother uh, motherly words, she she found mercy, she she softened uh, Christ's heart. And then Christ told her, her son, okay, my mother, I'm giving to you, into your hands, the, 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 all, uh, the, the humans, you become, your, uh, you become uh, their protectress. And, you know, and after, you know, based on this tradition, the very famous Kandakian, I believe we sing one on Sunday, um, um, every Sunday uh, here too, uh, where it says, O protection, uh, if we're familiar, it says, O protection of Christian, of, of Christians that cannot be put to shame, O mediation unto the Creator unfailing, this day not the supplicant voices of sinners, but be thou quick, O good one, to help us who in faith cry unto thee, hasten in intercession, and speed thou to make supplication, thou who dost ever protect, O Theotokos, them that honor thee. That's very famous Kandakian, that after that uh, tradition, her words, that the mother of God, you know, that uh, it was written, and, and it, it's very strong. There's so many, but you know, and in 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 all the liturgic cycle, when you uh, chant and now and ever, it's you dedicated to the mother of God in the canons and you know, in on the vespers, you know, in the, in the matins. And there's another thing that I I wanted to to say. Uh, there's another um, there's a vision that I there's a book of the, the Holy Fathers. I don't know which Holy Father. Uh, was in what century there was a, a a father that had a vision was taken to an angel took him to the you know, to heaven he saw different stages he saw most of, most of the saints and after he saw almost everybody he asked the angel okay i saw everybody but where is the most holy Teotokos? i did not see her anywhere and then the angel um, told her oh most of the time she's down on earth helping people so she's most of the time down than, 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 than on the earth. And that's one of the so many examples that, you know, I tell people if anybody really knows know what a human pain is, this is the mother of God. Because if anybody wants, you know, if she, according to the tradition, you know, she did not experience human pain when she gave birth to Christ. But that's why when Christ was suffering, that was her pain, looking at her son suffering. So, and again, if anybody really understands what pain, what struggle means that's definitely the mother of God. I mean, and we all have experienced our own little, you know, we have that experience, not a word, with, uh, you know, her love towards us. And I don't know if you have heard one of the biggest, there's so many miracles, and, you know, and the, you know, we do believe in them, and we, we love mother of God. Those are ones that, another confirmation that, uh, that her love for us, that she never leaves us. And one of the biggest ones that had happened in 2004, in uh, in uh, in Syria, I don't know if you have heard. So that was one of the biggest ones. I mean, even published almost every on all Orthodox articles. That was um, um, a Muslim man. Uh, he, he was traveling uh, with. Uh, he was in Syria, and he was in a taxi. So there's, a, there's some monastery, Mother of God. I've heard that it's a famous monastery there. I think with, with uh, there are nuns uh, who live there. 
And I, I mean, there's a mirror wonder uh, working icon of the Mother of God, and there's a Muslim guy traveling in the taxi. And I guess he was just talking, and then he was telling that his um, struggles and I mean, sadness that they cannot have a children. They were trying with his wife, and then he told him, "Oh, there's a monastery, you know, an Orthodox monastery. You know, there, there's so many, you know, miracles have happened." And he, he I guess, he a local taxi driver, so he just told like a, just like information. So the guy learns about the monastery. And the abbess told tell them to, to bring the uh, to come with his wife. So they come. Uh, he goes with his wife, Muslim couple, married, and they read the prayer. And the abbess, you know, tell them I believe that they won't have children, which turn out the next year. And he made a promise if God gives them a child, and when the, by the prayer of intercession, intercession of the Mother of God, they will come and give a big donation. I think it was eighty thousand dollars, I believe. I'm not sure. That's what. Um, someone was, was telling me the story that told me that amount. It was a big amount. That's a wealthy guy, person, family. So, you never heard that story before? Oh. Um, okay, it's, um, and then a year after, so that, that, that man, he had a, the taxi driver contest, so he tells him, hey, I'm, I'm coming. You know, this is, they can pick me up. I, I, we, my, my wife got pregnant. She became, we, we, we got a, a baby daughter. I'm, anyway, she gave birth to a child. So he told him, I'm coming to bring uh, money. I, he didn't say the amount, but you know, donation to the monastery. Can you pick me up? And so he already planned the taxi uh, drive. So he picks him up, half the way, his friends meet the taxi, they open, they, they kill, I'm um, not kill, but they, they how you call it, they, they cut uh, his body, his head, like literally on pieces. So they cut the person, they take the money, that amount, they cut him completely, they put him in a trunk, and they keep driving. So the, 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 I believe it was the, the wheel, you know, something happened, you know, the car breaks or, you know, the stop, and then there's a, 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 a um, blood dropping from the, from the trunk. Someone who was driving along the highway, they, they saw that, so they called the police. And the police come, you know, and they ask them to open the trunk. Uh, you, know, you can tell it's a, uh, dropping. And they open the trunk, the guy just, you know, just comes out and like pull it completely. For a time, they, those guys, you know, Four or five people see them, and they, they became like a crazy until today. Until today, they're in the how you call it, crazy house. On the spot, they just went crazy. Like they, they lost their mind completely. So what happened was that the mother of God just uh, finished uh, sewing. Uh, so I have I two versions that her son was helping her, but she was sewing like part of his body. So I mean, it's you know, it's it, it happened two thousand four. So I think that's one of the really like striking striking that that you can you can ever really. Um, I mean, well known. There's so many. So, but going through the, throughout the history, we have to understand that the connection. I mean, the Old Testament. You know, the old, everything was preparatory for coming for Christ. You know, for the and everything was fulfilled in the personality of Jesus Christ and Mother of God is the one that you know she said yes. Like I said earlier, she God didn't force her, but you know. He, you know, another important thing I was gonna say that among the among the, the, the way that that when she was um, when her um, you know the word podvik how would you say in English podvik struggle like a struggle mother of God with her podvik or struggle and with her um, obedience very important thing from the, uh, obedience from the age of three we know that from the age of three when she went to the temple. Uh, is the one of the is the best example that that how that, that God an example and prove that God can can give birth uh, that that a man can give birth to God. So because we know her life, her will, and everything you know along along the way. So in, in allegorical uh, understanding, the Mother of God uh, uh, shows that that giving birth. To, to God, you know, it's it's live on the will, you know, of, of I mean, people, in this case, the mother, I mean, God gave this will to, to the human being, which is the mother of God, but did not force. It just with one, with one saying, let it be, according to you. So said, yes, you know, she said, yes, I, I, I want to, you know, I, I'm here, I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm obeying myself, I, I want to, I, I want to do that. So that's really um, important, I think, point to, to say, well, you know, she said, you know, it's in Luke uh, chapter 138. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your, to your word. So, again, one of the biggest proofs that how that can happen, the obedience 
and all her life from the age of, of three. And, and also another confirmation was that, that um, she, she was purified. She, was, she didn't make a sin. She was born with a primordial sin, you know. But how, how we can understand this? Because by, by her going to the Holy of the Holiness, you know, on the age of three, and she was the only one, I mean, only, the, the only like the high priest would go once a year, and they would take like a rope with him in case if he's not worthy enough, he might, he might die. That's how holy it was. They would just pull him, by the way. That's how they used to do. They would hold, you know, they would have like a rope. In case he didn't come, they had to pull it, but nobody can go. So they would pull him. That's how holy it was, the holy of the holiest in the Old Testament. So the mother of God goes there, and not only one time, but she lived there. So that's another and the biggest proof about her purification. She was already purified, deified, and purified uh, by being there. And then ready, when she reached a certain age, the, the uh, Archangel Gabriel came, and then she said yes. So those things are really that important. I mean, to go back, to have what we have for her, there's a lot in the back, you know, to, to know. So, you know, and this, you would say, does it talk in, you know, in the Bible? Yes, it does. We, you know, there's so many things we just, unfortunately, we tend to understand or inter interpret in our own way. But when you think, just think logically and chronologically, using your, your mind and your heart, you know, things just fall into their own, own place. But by comes out to us how much we want to really understand or want to argue, we just want to come up with our own teachings as, uh, or understanding. That's why we have so many communities of the church. I feel like today, you know, we have everything on the, on the, on the, on the plate, like the food is prepared. Back, you know, when I think of the, the, of the early church, that's why when I come to modern, modern Christianity, it drives me so crazy how people compromise the faith. I'm not going to go to, to extreme, but how if those holy fathers in the early church died for us, the martyrs, I mean, the, the, you know, all the teachings that what we have today, you know, they had to die and, farm in, in a, you know, and it, it, in a, it, takes, it took so much time and centuries to formulate. And now we're going to, and then literally we have, we have the food. We, they prep for us everything. We have to eat. Here, here's the food. They can us just eat it, the knowledge. And now what we're doing today, oh, we don't need it. You know, with those modernism and unity, we don't need it. It's okay. You know, we, we can make exception. We, in another words, we tell, you holy fathers, we don't need it. Bye-bye. Go. You know, we are in the past. And that's why, like, we can't compromise. We really doesn't mean to go to an extreme. But if they're the ones who fight, who fought and who are fighting and doing all this to have what we have today, and, I, and now today we just take it for granted. We do. I take it for granted. But I don't. When it comes to compromising, I just can't. We really can't. And and this is the reason why. If they died for us and, and all this, I mean, Saint Maximus, the, the um, Maximus, the. Uh, I think it was Saint, Saint Maxim, yeah, when, uh, even, even to the point, he, he was the only one in the unity who didn't sign. Mark, sorry, Saint Mark. When I was reading his book, I was crying. And he was the only one who didn't sign, and they, they was all the men that torched him, that, that, that cut his tongue, his hand, so much pain. I, that book, I was, I, I was crying, I was, I was just, I was like shaking. This is how much damage did one person, because one, and he was the only one who didn't give up. Out of all people, he was right. My father said one time, he said, Athanasius, well, he said, if, if, how did you say, if everybody's against? The world is against Athanasius and Athanasius is against. I will never forget that. So we really have to really understand our faith and to what we have today, it's already, it's ready. We don't have to even, even prep. Just have to really take our time, read, uh, educate ourselves and live with our faith by all this. That's why we have the serve. Why we go to church? We don't go, we, we can certainly pray everywhere, but all these things are, are combined together that are making us living the tradition and the dogmas, the, litur the liturgical, everything that is being given to us from the very beginning. And the grace of God is just another thing that is keeping us to go so, you know, so we, don't, we don't go astray. So another thing for the, you know, for the mother of God, I was, I was gonna just say, you know, there's a, the, the feast entrance into the temple. That's why, you know, that's the feast. And in my country, I was talking to my friend today and he was telling me, I didn't realize that back home, we don't only call, at least in America, we say the Feast of the Mother of God entrance into the temple. But back home we say also the, the angel of the temple or, or the, the, the Feast of the Most Pure. Really, I didn't even think about it. So it's not only the Mother of God. So people even, I mean, the Orthodox countries, at least back in Macedonia, they, only, they call her the, most, the Feast of the Most Pure. So this, that Most Pure comes from the, the Holy of Holiness. Why do we call her Most Pure? Besides giving birth to Christ, because she already went to the temple. 
to the Holy of Holies. She grew up there. And then she, so all these things, she already was pure. And that purity was even more, I mean, confirmed with another words, by, by giving birth to Christ and yet remain virgin. So really, just the connection is just amazing. That I didn't even think about it. Uh, you know, I, I mean, we, we, we read every day, we learn about, about Mother of God, but really it's, 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 it's just amazing. It's, it's amazing when you, when you think about her and, you know, it's, I don't know what to say. It's, I, I'm going to just say again, if anybody wants what pain is, that is her. So, and again, we don't worship her, we venerate her. And often, you know, I don't like to talk, I mean, once in a while to people that I know, like in my, my prayers, I call her, you know, mama, for she's mama. It's so nice to call her like, mama, you help me. It's, it's, and you know, and what's even interesting when you think about it, like how much she loves us and we love it. Like she's so close to us to the point, we don't even like, uh, what is the word? When you, you know, when you, when you call him formal, like you, mister, even for Christ to say, you God, like my language, we have you, but you have the form of you. So even, we're so like, God gave, that, gave us that opportunity that to call even him, you Lord, you mother of God, you mama. So we don't, you know, this is how close she allows us to be. I mean, if we call people that we don't know, hey sir, or like out of, you know, formal, and God was even the closest to us, look how much she allows us, the mother of God, to call, to call her you, to call her mama. And, she, and then it's, it's really amazing. And at least for me, you know, coming from a foreign country, I mean, if it wasn't for God and Mother of God and St. John of Shanghai, but her, you know, there's no life, there's no, you know, and she's my mama. I mean, I never grew up with, with a mother myself back home. And, you know, she, now the older I get, the more I understand really her love. And I could never, I never, des I, I don't deserve her, I really don't. Honestly, I don't. But I, I just say one thing and to God. Many times when I pray, I say, God, whatever I become in my life, good or bad person, rich or poor, never, ever, ever let me be away from you. Because the biggest pain, not sin, worse than sin, the pain is the absence of, from God. And being away from God, Mother of God, is the, is the biggest pain. It, it hurts. And I can tell you, sometimes, you know, when I would, I would, I mean, sin, we all have, do different things, silly things. And sometimes I do something that I'm even afraid to. To pray, I, I, like I would, I would, I would do something. I'm, I don't even dare to go to my icon corner. I just, I'm just ashamed. One, two days, three days, and then just four days. Something that I just can't. You know, the body stay, goes away. I mean, out of shame. But then the third, fourth day, I just burst in tears. I just can't. Like the soul just wants it. You just know. Like in the fourth day, I just burst with tears. I'm like, I can't do it anymore. God, please, I can't. Uh, and and I it just, it's, a, it really, it's, it just can't. You can't help it. You really can't help it. So, and often, you know, I, you brought the Kursk root icon of the Mother of God. There's another miracle icon. Uh, it's in the Russian Orthodox Church. I mean, so when it, it travels around in different places. So when I came first to, to America, to, you know, to school, to Jordanville, I didn't even know, I knew about miracle, miracle icons. But see, for me, how can I say? I can be a little, um, I like to be more person, I'm personal, personable person. When it comes to things, I like to hug the icon. I, I just, my expression of things like, I like to be more like touch tangible. So the mother of God, I'm just sharing with you, not for me, just for, you know, the mother of God. When I first came, you know, I, I mean, to join you, you know, the icon came, you know, the old procession, the Akatis was sung, chanted. And I mean, she's, you know, the one that protects us from the piece of people in the diaspora, for not from here, I mean, to everybody, certainly. But when I saw, you know, sometimes you just feel connect and then connection and I, I, I just love the icon. I was, you know, I just, you know, just feel, I mean, you love every icon, the mother of God or with any, any saints. That I think two months after I went to New York City and I saw a copy, $20 of the Kursk icon, you know, same one, just a copy. And I, I do, you know, me and my silly, not silly, but in a good way, ideas. I, because the icon, when it travels, it has like a case you put on a stomach and that's how, you know, the icon travels. Somebody uh, carries on the, on, the, on the stomach. And I got the icon for $20, I, I went back and some nuns next to Jordan Bill, I asked them, can you make like a, um, like a little like a cloth around, just like original, then you put like a kind of, uh, not a real one, but like a pearls, uh, pearls around. They, they did that and I, I ordered like a case. So anywhere since then I traveled until today on a plane, Monatos, I went twice. That was like 40, I mean, no, 100, like 10, I was going to icon on me. Atos home, like anywhere I travel, I go there, I call her the one I travel with. 
it just you know in, in my own uh, home my you know I call in the anywhere I go I go in the airport you know, but then I order from Belarus Russia like a big case with a cross the icon with me and I, I'm not doing it out of pride I just like when I travel I, I put my icon and the icon next to me on the seat I buckle this is just me I you know we'll have different experience this is my experience I'm telling you and it, it, it's sweet because I'm like, so we are in, it makes it more safe and you know, whatever happens I have mama with me no matter you know and it's it's a beautiful thing it's really and until today you know I know I, I go the icon the icon goes 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 I was gonna bring it but if I got damage on the site I had to change it that's why I'm trying not to carry lately so the, the, either do this one or the other one for this one I just want to say this I'll, I'll finish then you can guys say something about your own experience but this one, I remember that I even like I never seen my life. I mean, merchant icon so much more like this one, literally. And again, dude, those are the vessels. We don't worship them again. Very important to understand. Those are the visible manifestation that God, the Mother of God, gives to us for our consolation and, and joy that we can see. And uh, so that one, I mean, like so much more to the point where at some point what, it was San Francisco, like the whole thing was wet. So you touch down the bottom of the thing, of the stamp, it was wet, like so wet. And when the first came to Jordanville, there was a year after, so I was, I think, second year, I heard about the icon, but I didn't even know, I never seen Merce showing icon myself. And I remember a few days before, a week of few days, I had difficult, some, you know, some temptations, some, I don't know, some struggles. It was, it, was, it was just difficult for me. And the icon came, I mean, when the icon, you know, came from the time, you know, was icon, they were taken to church, you can smell the more. It's it, it just unbelievable. And then, you know, went to venerate the icon, and <laughs> and then you know, you know, you know, like I took geology because I tell people, you know, you, you don't want to keep the, the pressure. If something is if you always talk, don't keep it because it's building. Then it's gonna just shake and explode like earthquake. Don't. So you know, just building, building, and it was just difficult. And all I did, I just went to venerate the icon first time and just started crying like crazy. I just couldn't control myself. I I I I don't. I haven't. I I'm, I I wasn't planning to do it. I I kiss the icon. Something just heavy like came out of me, and I'm like, I don't, and I started crying. I, I I kind of got embarrassed. I ran away in the back so I can calm down. <laughs> and then, but prior to, I, I prepared like a little postcard to give to the to the brother Nectari, to the he was on the side to the to the uh, keeper keeper of the icon. I went on, on the side. I'm like, thank you so much for this and for this for bringing the icon. He just gave me like a bottle of myrrh. And since then, you know, he he, he this icon he gave it to me. So I when, I, I know the icon. I mean, I when I go to Hawaii, you know. I have visited, so he's the one who. So it's these things that for me, if it's not for this, for God, for Mother of God, for St. John, I will not survive anywhere, especially in America. It's so hard. It's really, really, really hard. But it's, uh, otherwise, you know, I mean, life, it, it will never get easy. And if everything is good, something is wrong. There has to be something. But when we have this, we have everything. We have God, Mother of God. I mean, this is the foundation that. And I was telling my friend, uh, I have a friend, he was my. Uh, uh, fitness trainer, and we're talking about God, and I was referring, you know, to this, to the, to the Vedic Mother of God, about the Mother of Christianity in, in the Protestant world and the, the traditional. So imagine the difference when you go, and I'm not judging the, the other dominations, but they don't really prepare people how to fight. Like you go there, and you saw the modernism, you sit down, just relax, enjoy, talk about God, everything's fine. Uh, in short, you go home, struggles comes. You don't, you don't have, to, you, uh, you don't have to, how to fight. They don't teach you. You know, you don't have the tools, and you just, you know, in the oldest, you know, you just end up with disaster. In the Orthodox Church, in the, in the, in the, in the Eastern Orthodox, in the Christian, in a, you know, in our faith, you know, we, we don't, we don't, you know, tell, oh, come, it's okay, relax. No, nobody, you know, I mean, it's wonderful. But the, 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 the church life begins after we leave this building. But what we learn here, as Father would agree, it's, the, you know, the, the priest, the church is teaching us, is giving the tools, teaching us how to operate, like, you go to school for mechanic, you have to learn how, how to operate the machines. You can't just go in and do it. So you can't just, just go in, oh, what beautiful machines. You're gonna just ruin the machines. So they teach you, over here, they teach us, we learn how to, to use the tools. Uh, so the, the, the tools, how to protect ourselves. When, when the, the struggles comes, we know how to, 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 to protect ourselves. You go out in the world, you know, we have these things, how to protect ourselves. Versus over there, they don't teach you. And then, it just you know people get depressed. I'm I'm sorry, but it's true. The more I stay in this country, the more I realize, and it just makes sense. So this that's the modern Christianity where everything is wonderful, enjoy. Whereas here, it's a struggle, the spiritual life, and you know, I mean, that's, you know, the grace of God is helping us. 
but but the, the, the real life begins the litur liturgic life begins the liturgy after the liturgy when you leave it but when you have heard God you know that's when really we can we know how to handle and and overcome all the temptations the temptations that that we have so I'm not a, I just wanted to share you know there's so much to talk about God and I would like to spend some other time along the way as I learned some more things, especially the miracle. I love the miracles. For me, I even a seminary. I love dogma, but for me, I always try to avoid. It's good to understand, to know. I always like you know more like patristic patrology, the Holy Father, the Mother of God, like examples, the liturgical part, things that you know. And I mean, we have to know everything. Those two things I really enjoy, like talking about. I mean, the examples, miracles, things that those are things that happen. Nobody made them, made them up. And you are, and then somebody else you you know want to argue about Mother of God. This is the biggest, you know, things that we have, like the Holy of Holy, there's all these things that, you know, they, I mean, not always, but they are there. And then that's, you know, we can't just deny. I mean, say, again, say everything, but don't you dare to talk about Mother of God because you don't have a problem, not you. <laughs> but it's, however, it's, you know, I told you, don't try. Do everything, but do not, don't you dare, because, you know, you're gonna have a problem with me, I'm sorry. If, I, if I'm stubborn, I'm gonna be stubborn for that. And I use it for that, <laughs> so. So anyway, if, I mean, any of you, you know, want to say something, well, Father, I would love to hear you. You, are the, you have so much experience, and you serve in the altar. You, you know more than, you know, you, Thank you. you can say, you know. Thank you very much. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> when I, well, first of all, thank you very much, Sympathy Constorium, just even good for me to uh, to just sit and see another person's love and enthusiasm for a topic and particularly a topic like the mother of God when I well just uh, of the things I was thinking about or remembering the one that I enjoy talking about the most <clears throat> that regarding the mother of God that helps clarify I think particularly for people of Western heritage is that salvation, when we, when we look at what God is actually accomplishing through salvation, the, the nature of it or the direction of it, we would say, we describe as being the reversing of the effects of the fall. So we have Christ incarnate, we have the crucifixion, we have <clears throat> Christ paying a debt that we could not pay ourselves, the, the atonement there, then the glory of his resurrection. And those are those, Christ is the person, the God-man who saves us. And he saves us through these salvific moments of, of being who he, he is as the God-man and fulfilling the will of God simultaneously offering himself as the perfect sacrifice for us and overcoming death for us. So those are those scriptural and, and moments of salvation. But when we look at what is he really doing when from Adam and Eve to us today, what is the effort that is being made? What is, it's hard to describe, it's... Um, you know, it is restoring everything back to the way that he intended it for it to be from the beginning. And so God brings the universe into existence. He creates the earth. He creates the heaven and the, and the, the soil. He creates the water and the seas. He puts man there with all the animals. Uh, Adam and Eve are created together. Before the fall, they're told to, to have dominion over the earth and to... Be fruitful and multiply before the fall. So that is the, you know, I like to call that plan A of God. You know, and, and if plan A had been fulfilled, we would have simply lived in that state of holiness and, and knowing God. And the, the fathers teach that the, the Garden of Eden would simply have been expanded as the generations after Adam and Eve lived that death would not have entered into the world and that we would have this you know this globe of paradise on earth um, 
but he gives us, as Stoyan referred to, he gives us this, this highest of likeness to him when he gives us free will. And free will is, it's always a risk. It's an aspect of love. Because true love, pure love, is reciprocal. You can't, you can't have the fullness of love when you're loving and the other person isn't loving back. But you also can't have genuine love if, if they have to love you back. Right? The love can't be forced. Love can't be robotic. There has to be a risk in love that I give it 100% freely and you give it to me 100% freely. And that is, that is real God-like love. And that can't exist if the creature that God creates can't love him freely. There can't be, even the angels, when the fathers talk about the, the angels, they talk about the angels having limited free will. Because of being outside of time and space, a decision for them compared to us is permanent. From our perspective, they only have to make it one time. And so the day came when all the angels were faced with the decision of, do you love God? And to oversimplify it, you know, two-thirds of the angels said, yeah, we love God. And they forever love God. They never, they never regret that decision. They ne they're never double-minded. They don't uh, reconsider that decision. And a third of the angels said, no, we, we don't love God. And forever, they have no regret about it. They're angry that he's going to win in the end. They're angry that they're wrong, but they don't actually regret that they made that decision. And then these creatures come along, human beings that God creates in time of, in, inside of time and space, and we can change our mind every moment. Every moment. And when I was listening to Stoyan talk about the mother of God being in the temple, this place where in that time and place of, of relationship with God, if you were in there sinning, you died. I mean, you know, like you said, and that's one of my favorite things to point out about going into the, the Holy of Holies is the rope. That they, I mean, imagine being in a place or even here on Sunday morning, and every time I went into the altar, I had a rope tied around my leg, and there were special acolytes or men in the church that were out here, and if I, if I was found to be unworthy and fell over dead in the altar area, I could be retrieved, my body could be retrieved by pulling a rope out. I mean, and she lived there. So compare, compare that reality of her living in the Holy of Holies with her having the free will that we have, where we vacillate about our relationship with God or our attraction or rejection with sin thousands of times a day, probably. You know? And it wasn't that she was forced to do that because then her love for God would have been false. It wasn't that she was created without the effects of the fall. Otherwise, she wouldn't have been a real human being. She is us, but after that multiple thousands of years of waiting for the mother of God to come along, that person who would freely choose with that free will to love God perfectly, despite being in the fallen world, suddenly the mother, God, mother of God is there. And so, but in this whole history of things we have, which always is inspiring to me, we have God reversing the effects of the fall he has plan A, Adam and Eve are in the garden. He has plan B, which is the incarnation. Because it's through the incarnation that, that we are restored. But he also literally reverses the fall. So in, in the Garden of Eden, you have the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You have a man that God creates. And from that man comes a woman. And through that tree, the fall occurs. And then you get all the way to, then you have the advent of, of Mary, and you have a woman giving birth to a man who will be obedient, and through it, the tree of the cross, not bring death into the world, but conquer death or drive death out of the world. And I remember the first time studying that and realizing that because I had always heard of reversing the effects of the fall as an expression of like the, the goal or the purpose of the spiritual life. But then realizing that even historically, 
God is in his providence allowing it to be literally reversed. And so we, we refer to uh, Christ as the new Adam and, and Mary as the new Eve because it's the new paradise and the new tree that is getting us back to plan B. I mean plan A. And it's actually, to stick with the metaphor, it's plan A+. plus. <laughs> Because if Adam and Eve had had not sinned, as scripture makes clear to us, we would be the perfect, sinless, godly servants of God. But, but his, his nature would not be available to us the way it is now through the incarnation because he, he becomes man. That intimacy of nature doesn't exist before the incarnation. And that is our God, just to end on an on a uplifting note, that is our God. He takes his plan, his plans are perfect, by the way, right? He has the best plans. He takes his best plan, and when we mess it up, what he turns it into is an even better plan than what he started out with. I mean, think about that for a minute. And Christ says to his disciples, I no longer call you servants. I used to. I mean, that's what's inferred in there. I, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. And that is a connection, which is what, you know, we get into when we teach about theosis and deification and becoming, as St. As Athanasius, again, great quote, that becoming by grace everything that God is by nature. Think about that. That's a terrifying statement. I remember being very young in orthodoxy and feeling like it was heretical, you know, feeling like how, like that's, uh, is that okay to say? Or, or the saint saying, and it's always a little g, but the saint saying that God became man, that man might become God. And it's a little g. It means in his likeness. The, the likeness fulfilled uh, doesn't mean that we come de become deities ourselves. Um, and that, but that's, that is the God that we worship. That is his love and mercy for us. That when he gives us the greatest gift that could be given, life, purity, holiness, communion with him, and we abuse it, he creates a situation out of our problem that makes the fruit of it even better. So now we may have a harder struggle, but, but the, the goal, uh, the fulfillment at the end, what is offered, the gift, the love is even greater than was was offered originally. But always remember that the Theotokos is the new Eve. She is the woman who gives birth to a man who through a tree brings life into the world and reverse literally reverses uh, the story of Adam in, in the garden. Uh, any any questions so far from anyone? I have a comment. I yes. remember reading always about how the cross itself came from like Holy wood. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, in God's providence, it's another thing. So the the wood of the cross, uh, the tradition is that the the trees that became that were we would say um, milled in order to become the wood that becomes the the cross that Christ is crucified on is from the the three staffs that the angels have given to Abraham. Abraham gives them to Lot, and Lot has to water them as until they grow as his penance for, for sinning with his daughters after, after the destruction of Sodom and, Sodom and Gomorrah. And that in that providence, though, we, one of the things we discover about God, the creator, it's obvious once we think about it, but as creator, he's incredibly artistic. He's incre an incredible story maker in the sense of of what the world would call fate or fulfillment like how things come together in the end to actually fulfill perfectly what he desires another tradition that goes along that with that is that and we see this in the icon of the crucifixion in the traditional icon of the crucifixion there's a skull under at the bottom always symbolically that um that shows the conquering of death that through the death on the cross, death is, is destroyed. Um, but there are also traditions that say that when the cross, when they literally dug the hole in the ground to put the cross into the ground, that they dug it into the, they dug into the grave of Adam. That is where Adam actually died and was buried. 
Um, some of these things, they're non-dogmatic. You don't have, we don't have to believe it in order to be Orthodox Christians, but when we see the things for sure that God does, revealing himself, we know that it, that is in the realm of possibility. Um, and with the cross particularly, we sing in church that uh, about the cross being made out of the, the spruce and the pine and the cedar. We name these three woods that were the three staffs that grew in this particular tree. And so if he can do that, you know, Stoyan was talking a lot about the, the importance of miracles, which in the West particularly, we struggle with that as a, as a culture a lot of the time. We are very rational, which protects us in a lot of ways because we're not superstitious by nature, but we also, the weakness that comes with that is we're cynical and doubtful about everything. And, and yet when we really look at what God accomplishes and what continues to be accomplished miraculously in the church, um, we see that, it, that what he can do with Mary in, in, in cooperation with her in cooperation with the human race, waiting for someone to voluntarily become the person he needs them to be. Uh, I like to say to the children when I'm teaching them that, you know, God is outside of time. By nature, he's not supposed to wait for anything. It's all now. It's all in the now. There's no past. There's no future. It's the now. And in that ultimate timeless nowness, the, the eternal presence of God, he, he's waiting for her to come along, the patience that's there. You know, this deity that can simply out of his will make things happen. He can fix everything just by saying, I want it fixed, right? Make, let it be done, boom, it's all done. The, the whole fall is reversed, everybody is restored, everything's fine again. But because he wants voluntarily, voluntary, loving, genuine relationship with us as individual persons, he waits. He waits thousands of years for the mother of God to be born. He waits generation after generation for us individually to choose him and to turn to him. And it's a loving, loving, gentle patience with which he waits. And he rejoices, as scripture tells us, that, that heaven rejoices when one person repents. One person. So I tell the kids to go to confession. It makes the angels happier. <laughs> We can change the state of heaven by admitting our sins. How's that for a dichotomy, you know, like her?